think we are. Oh my god. Gosh. Gosh. No, this is it. We're gonna we don't have like what? a din in it. I'm only one man. Hundred miles an hour. We already got the intro. Put the one that David did. Uh, that's his. Yeah, that's his little boy. Yeah. Hey, hey. Watch. All right. So who's going? Who's the so, arrow man? Who do you think? All right, guys. Welcome to the stream. This is the first boss room. Um, you know, we uh, we want to get involved doing this stuff earlier rather than later. Um, we're hoping to do this at least twice a month, if not more. We're just going to have to kind of feel it out and go from there. Um, but really, it's just us coming together. And you know, one week it may be Cliff and Schmel, next week it may be Josh, or maybe you know anyone from the from the studio here. So we really want this to be kind of an open door uh, for everyone, and uh, to talk about games that we're playing, to talk about our game, to talk about uh, pretty much pretty much anything. But we also want to. Um, sorry, we want to make sure. Oh, that was the audio. Well, Audio's too low. Well, can you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Well, see, that's well, what that's happens. That's why. Oh, what's it's coming oh, down. Like, uh, the mic was limp. My God. What? Come on, Rohan. Cialis for that. Jeez. There we go. The first, there first we time go. Mike, now, can you hear me now? You got to, uh, you gotta excuse my friend here. Audio? It's his first time doing these such things. Is that better? Yeah, Say yeah. what? All right, we're good. Yes. Yeah, so, so I mean, from my end, uh, you know, promising as much transparency as possible. Um, games are usually developed in this kind of like behind the Great Wall of China type vibe, and then you expose it, and uh, we're going to try and trickle out as much as possible before we start blowing out early alpha builds and whatnot. Yeah. So that's why we're here. And I'd like to introduce myself, since how these guys just don't really think that you can just read. Some people can't read, so I'm going to say, I'm Tremel Isaac, I am the art director on uh, whatever we're going to call this game, we don't have a name yet, but uh, that is my position, and everybody knows this dude, right? Come on, man, introduce yourself. I'm Cliff Blazinski, uh, I've made games since I was like wet behind the ears, and I took a year and a half off, to, and I got bored, and then I started recruiting awesome, talented people to make something cool, and we're at uh, 21 people right now, you know, which is a pretty good ramp as far as uh, people were you know, hiring, uh, you know, talent from all sorts of different studios. And I've known this guy for uh, quite some time, tried to hire him back in the day at Epic, and he so, wasn't having it. So long ago. It took me years to wear him down. I know, now, look at it. Look what happens now. Yep, what you're, happens? you're on like, your own journey, and now it's just like, like ships in the night. It's like fucking Wonder Twin pops. Exactly. Dude. Activate. Activate. So, or love, butt plug. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I'll go off of that. Uh, so I'm Rohan Rivas. I'm the, uh, the community manager or key communicator here at Boss Key. Um, also the guy uh, that forgets to set up the mics uh, before the stream. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Too Get much. There's a lot going on. on. So, uh, yeah, we appreciate uh, you guys just rolling with this. We're going to figure it out as we go. Um, and, yeah, so to start. Um, Why does it still say online, dude? Yeah, I don't know. Are we even broadcasting? I don't think we are. Uh, I think we froze. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, so while this is uh, kind of loading up here, so... The state of the industry, right? You know, there, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, and, and something we want to do here, in addition to talking about our game, is also talk about you know what's going on in the game industry, and and you know this week we see you know uh, microtransactions in Assassin's Creed and and all that kind of stuff. Um, Overwatch, you know, some great Halo Five multiplayer reveal. There's yeah, some great uh, stuff the, the first thing. I mean, I talk a lot of shit online on Twitter and everything, as we all know, um, and. There's something really weird going on, I think, in the AAA space right now, where you have these games that are sixty dollars. You know, the day one got a pre-order mentality, and then from there on out, you know, the budgets of the games for next gen are just so insanely high. With the, everyone expects a certain amount of graphical fidelity, and then after that, you wind up with marketing budgets where everyone's trying to outmarket each other by getting games during NF or ads during NFL games, and sooner or later, that bubble is just starting to show some some leaks in it. You know, and mm -hmm. I think uh, you know they're trying to make up the money on the back end by DLC, season pass, microtrans, and it's just it rubs a lot of gamers wrong. Um, I'm not for or against it. You know, we sold weapon skins back in the day of Gears Three because uh, it was one of those ways to try and you know squeeze more water from the stone of incredibly expensive games. But it's really rubbing a lot of gamers uh, pretty pretty wrong right now, right? And I would think also you know the issue of bugs, right? Like when you're doing something that has so many damn features and so much in it, so like you could have. 10,000 QA people working on it for two years and you're not there's no way you're gonna find everything that's uh, in the game humanly possible It's just impossible until the game comes out, but you know you're spending $60 for a game you demand a quality product So 
you know, some people choose to wait for patches after that point. But do you think, like, as far as, like, companies making games that rely on micro microtransactions, do you think that's more of an extension of their brand so that people can feel like they have some kind of ownership in the character that they spent yeah, time yeah, creating? Yeah, that's part of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just the whole, I've paid the $60 already, and you're going to charge me for more stuff in game. That really seems to offend a lot of gamers. But, I mean, when you go free to play, it's one of those things you can spend as little or as much as you want to. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, in some of the research we've done with our free to play from our end is, depending on the market, you know, in North America, people in free to play tend to like to pay for certain things. In Russia, they'll pay for certain things. In China, people pay for gun rentals in games. It's like, it's different for every single market as far as what they'll go for and what infuriates them. And, you know, if you're paying $60, you know, and you go to a chest to go to unlock it for money, you know, gamers, they get miffed about that. You know, and that's one of those things you have to be really careful with. Yeah, do you think that, I mean, that's that's an annualized franchise at this point, right? Do you, and plus they developed Unity and the other Assassin's Creed game. And it, I don't. I, I want to see the credits list. It blows my mind yeah. that, they, that the game's even shipped, right? And I mean, it, it's, it's at the point where, you know, a lot of these medium-sized studios have the chance to create a new IP, and they get one shot. And if they don't, what happens is they wind up being moved to being part of the multi-headed hydra that is this kind of almost octopus of game development, where it's like, oh, you know, you... You know, Raven, you were going to make this game Singularity. It didn't do what you expected, so now you're helping out with Call of Duty. And it's really this silo of, you know, six to ten mega franchises now that are getting annualized. And it's yeah, really I don't, I don't think state. medium game developers actually exist in any kind of space, really. Because when you become that medium uh, kind of company, you end up having to sell yourself to a, a bigger company. You either have a publisher... You're not big enough to be the publisher, yeah. and you're not small enough to rely on your own brand. So it, being a medium game developer is just kind of like a hard spot to be in at this point in time. But, but I think now um, with digital distribution and free-to-play and all this stuff, like, you know, I'm hoping you know, we can be medium you know, and, and do something unique and original uh, in the free-to-play space without doing kind of dirty monetization. You know, with like, oh, you know, you can have your weapon now, or, or if you spend five bucks, which is just nasty, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hate to go back to it, but I'm really curious to get your thoughts. So, do you think that it is right um, for, like, Assassin's Creed Unity to come out if it's technically, if it has bugs in it? If it has, if it is unfair. That's, you, that's that Ubisoft's goal, man. You know, okay. that's, their business is their business. Um, yeah. You know, nobody tries to ship a buggy product or anything like that. Um, but, you know, those developers who are on that annual death march, it's rough. You know, yeah. that happened back in the day with Madden. You know, the developers just get it out, get it out, get it out. And, um, you know, it's such a fantastic IP and such a, normally a fantastic game that, you know, they'll patch it, they'll fix it, but, you know, it causes a certain amount of ill will. It's a shame. Yeah. So, Overwatch. Right? Yeah. I think, it's been a, I think it's been a week. I think it was last Friday that they kind of dropped the bomb. Yeah, Blizzard does game announcements. Yeah. Like, Beyonce drops albums. It's just like, boom, done. Internet just loses its shit, right? Um, I think it looks freaking cool. Yeah. You know, it's like the, it's definitely different for them. Yeah, They're totally different for them. Like you wouldn't expect a game like that to come out of Blizzard. Yeah, I mean, I heard there's certain elements of the canceled Titan game that wound up making its way into mm -hmm. it. Um, I'm just happy to see Blizzard doing a new IP after 18 years. Uh, yeah. You know, it was, you know, Warcraft, Starcraft, War, all of that, which are great. But it's like to see something this fresh looking. It it really feels spiritually like the next evolution of Team Fortress 2. Um, the art style feels very kind of Pixar-ish, kind of cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Um, the character hero thing uh, works well. They've got a space gorilla, um, which, you know, I'll be playing as the girl who kind of looks like the StarCraft ghost girl with the sniper rifle and the grappling hook. I really don't feel like playing as a space gorilla. Why but not? Dude, space gorilla is cool. He's Beast, man. He's Let's call a beast, spade a spade. Man. He looks like Beast. He's got the glasses even. He's Kelsey, he's Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, pretty much. But hey, it's cool. Tough, it works. Um, but, you know, Blizzard just... they're the. I, I visited actually a couple years ago. Um, one of my good friends, Demond, his... Uh, brother Dion works there and when you go to visit Blizzard Blizzard has this gate right and it's like <laughs> you feel like you're showing up at like uh, Buckingham Palace and they have the big sign Blizzard because everyone knows it's Blizzard and you can't even park your car in the parking lot they have a valet guy because they don't have enough parking spots so they have to like kind of hot potato the cars in and out and if you visit Blizzard you have to sign the NDA you can take some pictures of like the statue outside you can take pictures of the characters and everything that are like the, the maquettes and everything but all the walls of concept art at the weekend they pull a tarp over it so I didn't see a damn thing, even though I signed yeah. the NDA. And they somehow managed to keep the majority of that art and the majority of that game a secret from the rest of the world, which in this day and age of leaks and planned leaks and, yeah. all, and all that stuff is really remarkable. And um, full disclosure, you know, if you were to do the Venn diagram of what we're doing here with our game and their game, there is some overlap. So for me, it's one of those situations like, okay, 
they were doing A, let's let's do B instead, right? Where we can we can be somewhat different from them. They just they put their heads together and they're like, so many people still love and are playing Team Fortress Two. Where is the spiritual successor to that? You know. Yeah, and the fact that they have characters that are like you know characters you would find in League of Legends, right? You have this yeah. this highly defined character, uh, which I assume has you know uh, a history, backstory, and lore, everything. These all of these abilities. Those are very, for me, I identify with that really, really well. Well, when you, when you do a multiplayer-only game and you don't have a campaign to kind of teach you yeah. that this is Master Chief, this is the Warthog, do, 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 going up the beach, you need the lore. You need mm -hmm. those cool cinematics uh, that kind of tell the story. I mean, Riot obviously knew this and they did it best, but Blizzard did it even back in the day because when you were playing all of their top-down little strategy games, uh, you've seen these tiny little dudes, you have maybe a little bit of character, and then you're getting these amazing cinematics where you're kind of projecting that mm -hmm. onto them. So, well, Team Fortress 2 took that to another level where, yeah, those where were they so released good. each one of those uh, videos yep. based Showing on the personalities. Meet, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's where it's going to be. Like, if you're going to be making that hero type game, you need that that lore in order for that multiplayer game to feel like it's you know actually rich and involved and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I think you'll probably see another. A uh, company or two do the same thing. <laughs> well, I mean, from our end, we have writers who are already working on some stuff, right? And, uh, you know, you get a little preview later of, of one of the weapons and figuring out who the manufacturer is behind this, what's the history, who's the guy who founded this company, uh, who's, the, you know, this character, what's this character's backdrop, what happened in the world, you know, how did the world get to this state? Uh, you know, not everybody's going to read it, but your most ardent fans, the people who tune in to this kind of thing, who you will know, post on our subreddits and everything like that, they'll know it. And there becomes this kind of elite, uh, you know, club of players and like oh, you don't know where the Belize manufacturers that originated to get the hell out of here you know I was here early when the, when they were just doing the, the scrappy little podcast and it's, it's a useful thing when you're building a new world and a new company absolutely so Halo 5 right we saw multiplayer yeah um, what did you guys think I'll play it yeah yeah I'm not really a Halo fan. I've never been a Halo fan. It's what is it? What is it? Is it the game? It's the console. System? It was just because it was on the console. I've never been a console shooter guy. Coming from the PC heritage, yeah, right? just just couldn't do it. Just yeah, couldn't do it's. It, uh, so. I still enjoy it. I mean, they nailed the idea of the controls on consoles back in the first place over at Bungie. Um, but you know, it's like everybody's doing a double jump and a dash now. Yeah, it's like yeah. mobility. Mobility is the new hotness, right? And that's one thing we're sitting here looking what we're doing because we're doing some stuff that's very much taking that but going even further to the point where I, I don't know how we're going to port this game onto consoles if we ever do because <laughs> it is so crazy with the movement right now that uh, not enough buttons so, yeah, not enough that, yeah that too right and I mean it's it, you know it's a little lazy sometimes to just use a bunch of different buttons on the keyboard and, and but you know then you wind up with like weapon wheels and all that shit right um, but it's going to be a challenge and you know we're hoping uh, you know the game becomes a hit and Sony and Microsoft come to us and say hey we have a great team who wants to support it and I'm like ha, good luck guys so yeah if you haven't heard uh, any of the audio play tests that we have on our YouTube channel go check them out I think it kind of gives you a good picture of you know what that means bullshit laser bullshit <laughs> Arjun is the best man he's the best yeah so uh, no I think it looks great um, it's so funny though because what's old is new you know like uh you know, Quake's movement, Unreal Tournament's jump and double jump and dodging. You know, these are all new to an entire generation of gamers who were too young to play those games, right? And now, you know, it's new. Like, more power to them. It just looks great. Yeah, and I think that they're smart. They're saying, okay, you know, Iron Sights is an innovation, right? In the first person shooter. Well, that was very controversial if you read well, some of their comments. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, but yeah. personally, I think it's like, embrace it. You yeah, know? Yeah. Well, they well, have to, embrace right? it. Because it's, it's a whole audience yeah. of people who play that. You've got millions and millions of people who are used to that kind of gameplay. Yep. If you kind of like take that out and say, thumb your nose at it, oh, fuck what they're talking about, then you already just alienated a shit ton of people. You know, so you got it, you know, and it's not, I don't think it's pandering. I think it's more about just acknowledging what the, no, the totally. player base is and, and going with that. The thing is, is uh, from what I've read about what they're doing with Iron Sights, it's largely cosmetic. It doesn't slow your movement. It doesn't mm -hmm. change your aiming. Hip firing is still as useful. Yeah. It's just a matter yeah. of a bit of a zoom, which Halo has had on its weapons. You get shot and the, the, the scope drops, just like all the Halo zooms have been the entire time. So it's the whole, you know... Damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, if you change the game too much, you've ruined it. If you don't change it, it's version 1.5. So, you know, it all comes down to, it does, does the recipe all work together? Do the ingredients work to make a tasty uh, dish of death and destruction? And I think, you know, I, I think 343 does a good job. Yep. Cool. So what we're going to do now is we have a really great team here at Bosky. And, you know, it's, we can't get everyone 
here to to you know be on the stream. However, we wanted you guys, all of all of you out there, to to meet everybody and see what everybody does here because uh, they they are as important as Tramel, as Cliff, as Chris, as anyone here. So, uh, Chris, if you want to uh, to play the video, let's check it out. Hey, I'm Matt Fishman. I'm a gameplay programmer, and I worked on Far Cry 4 and Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Hey, I'm Ryan Palzer, senior animator here. Uh, I've worked on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty Ghosts, uh, and a whole bunch of the Guitar Hero games. Hi, I'm Chris Wells, senior character artist here at Boss Key. I've worked on the Gears of War and Unreal Tournament series, as well as Ghost Recon and Rainbow Six. Hey, what's going on? It's Tramel Isaac. Hi, I'm Dave Rose, uh, UI Ninja. Worked on Call of Duty and Guitar Hero. Yo, yo, what's up guys, this is Joshua Parker, senior gameplay programmer here. I've worked on Ghost Recon Future Soldier, Far Cry 4, and The Division. Hi, my name is Arjun Brushy. I made Jessica Rabbit with Cliff 20 years ago. I then went on to create Killzone at Guerrilla Games, and uh, now I'm co-founder at Bosky. Hi, I'm James Hawkins, senior concept artist here at Bosky. I previously worked on Gears of War and Unreal Tournament. Hey, uh, I'm Roman Dura. Uh, I worked on Far Cry 4, Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six Vegas, uh, Driver, Raymond, a bunch of other stuff. My name is Brandon Bickford. I'm a senior visual effects artist. Previously, I worked at Crystal Dynamics on the Tomb Raider series for the last seven years. Hey, my name is Dan Nani. I'm a senior multiplayer designer at Boss Key. I've worked on games like Battlefront, Battlefield, and Killzone. Hi, my name is Sarah Asby. I'm executive assistant here at Boss Key Productions, Inc. And my previous work includes uh, Gears 1 through 3. Hey, my name is Chris Milkey. I'm the senior producer on the project. I worked on such titles as Mech Assault, Gears of War, Shadow Complex, and now on Blue Street. Hi, I'm Ian Kuslidge. Uh, I'm a level designer here at Boss Key. Uh, I got my start making levels for Team Fortress 2. Uh, back in 2013, Valve bought two of them, Stand In and Process. And that's kind of how I got the job here. Hey everyone, my name is Rohan Rivas. Uh, previously I was at Game Trailers. Uh, now I am the key communicator, uh, otherwise known as community manager, here at Bosky. Hey, I'm Randall Hess, uh, principal technical animator here at uh, Bosky. Uh, previous games that I worked on included uh, Saints Row and Red Fiction series. Hi, I'm Josh Reif, a senior artist here at Bosky Productions. Uh, previously worked on the last five infamous titles for Sucker Punch, um, up to Second Son and First Light. Hey, what's going on? It's Tramel Isaac. I'm the art director here at Boss Key. Uh, previously worked on Plant Side, Plant Side 2, Fallout, Fallout 2, and I'm working on the next big thing at Boss Key. Gears of War, Call of Duty, Ghost Recon, Future Soldier, Far Cry 4, Planet Side, Tomb Raider, Battlefield, Rainbow Six Vegas, Unreal Tournament, Fallout, The Division, Team Fortress 2, Kill Zone. <laughs> Project Blue Street. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of people that... You guys are have, cold. Yeah. You're cold. <laughs> Straight up cold. You're like, look at that guy. He looks like this, that, and yeah, That guy looks like he hasn't showered in a week. Oh, before, we had a company meeting earlier, and I warned the guys. I'm like, you, you know how the internet is. They will find one thing, and they will hone in on it and, and make fun of you for it. So, thicken up those skins, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so there, I mean, there's a ton of great people who work here, and you know, we wanted to hit them up on Twitter. You know, uh, we we want to have a conversation with everyone. We want to to be engaging you guys, and you know, nobody that works here is a secret. Um, we want to bring them all into the spotlight as much as as we are. So, well, there, there's a tendency with a lot of traditional publishers to hide the talent, mm -hmm. and I think that reeks of insecurity. Uh, it's because you know the employees are traditionally treated like these kind of just these worker bees that are interchangeable. Right, and people may come and people may go, but at the end of the day, you know, it's like, oh, you know, you can let your spouse go out and have a girls' night. You're like, what are, what are you so afraid of, right? Like, you can't be by her side the entire time. It's just one of those situations that, you know, I believe in celebrating developers, you know, yeah. promoting them, so you get to know who some of these people are, you know, and, and then you guys on the internet can tell them, talk shit about the hairlines. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's a double edged sword, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you've been in front of in front of the firing squad many times. You know, I've been a couple been victim to a couple bad words here and there but at the same time it's like you want you want people to get out front but you don't want that to be become a burden like you know you get people out there and you know one of my things is I, I, if, if I'm on Twitter I'm, I'm talking to somebody who's talking about the game or whatever 
I treat them with the same level of respect that I, as I would talking to them in person. You know, yeah. sometimes a couple of people get out of pocket and I get out of pocket with them. So it's like you can't like having people out there and, you know, in, in the Twitterverse and having people out there in this situation where we're streaming and talking to people. We got to let them know, like, look, you know, you, somebody's going to be a complete douchebag to you at some point in time. And that's now part of your job is to deal with the D-bags of the world. Yep. But uh, and, and I think that's why it's a lot of companies are kind of shying away from putting people out there because, you know, it's, it's demoralizing when people are just complete asses to you. But, you, uh, you get used to it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't care. It's like you, when people, a lot of people talk trash on the Internet, and that's great. I'm, that's I understand that. I get that. You you have the security of the internet. Have you had the guy who like tweets you, you know, like when you were working on Planet Side, like Planet Side's a piece of shit, I hate you. Yeah. And yeah. you're replying, you're like, dude, what's up? And he's like, Oh sorry, I really love the game. <laughs> I it sounds like with Gears, I was oh, like, you do you tweet me like you're a you're a fag god, Gears of War sucks. And he, I click on his profile, he's got the hoodie and all the outfit on and I'm like, dude, what? He's like, Oh sorry. It's like, you know, people just they don't think you're listening, but everybody reads Twitter when they're on on the fucking toilet. They read their ads, you know? Yeah. So with that, uh, we want to kind of celebrate um, some of our community. You know, we we want to ask questions to you guys. We want to, you know, we'll ask you a question like a couple weeks ago, uh, Chris, if you want to go to, cool. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we asked, you know, what do you like showing off to other players during uh, FPS multiplayer games? You know, in terms of vanity, cosmetics, uh, badges, icons, um, and we take this feedback. We we take what you guys are saying. Um, and I report that to the dev team. Um, I give all that feedback uh, in a digest, and, and we see what sticks. So, you know, coming off of, of these contributors that we have, you know, uh, Tachibana828, uh, Spazo1, Zebur, and Tao Devil, um, these guys had some great, great thoughts. What's up, and, Tao? You know, one thing that I really liked uh, personally is, is the, the battlefield, you know, ripping the dog tags off and taking that trophy. Um, you know, I thought that was a great, uh, some great feedback, um, you know, from you guys, from your perspective, you know, what do you think? I think this goes back to the, uh, the whole Vietnam War era where the crazy soldier would take the years of the people he killed. You know, it's one of those things you, you want the trophy that you want to show off potentially from something you've earned. And, yeah. um, you know, eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah. Eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, you know. If you if you jib somebody, you know you can collect their testicles or ovaries. Yes. And then make <laughs> make a fine gumbo with a good stock. That sounds. Good. Yeah. No. But yeah, I mean it's 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 really a you know flair. Yeah. You know if you have a game where a lot of people are playing, you're gonna want some flair. You know to show it off. Um, and then you know the way that that's acquired either through just spending time to unlock it or a little bit of money to get a little something. Again, you know we're doing that whole thing where we're not pay to win. Yep. Right. It's one of those things. You know everything you can get in game can be earned through just playing the darn game. Um, but again, there's cosmetics as well, and if cosmetics, you know, you spend a buck, get a hat, you know, worked okay for Valve. Yeah. Cool. So, what we want to do now um, is check out some of the art. You know, yeah. we've been uh, we've been slow with kind of releasing some assets, and you know, as we build up and build the team, uh, you know, that stuff is going to start coming out more and more and more. So, you know, big reason why Tremel's on today, uh, not because he's so stylish. Uh, is I got nothing. I know. Is because uh, you know we want to debut and show off art for the first weapon for Sweet. for Project Blue Street. Is so this, is this uh, approved weaponry? Because yes. I want to make sure I don't want nobody getting all the pun panties in a bunch because we're showing stuff. So I just want to make sure this is this okay. Is, this is a approved. Okay. So double stamped. Cool. Somebody so, stamped this. All right. Sweet. So this is the law, what we call the light uh, accelerated weapon. I am the law. And, uh, you know, I don't think we've actually got, like, some properties on it yet, do we? We've got a couple things that it does. Yeah, it's an energy weapon, um, and the, I can't really tell the full Monty of what it does, but, um, you know, uh, coming from the Unreal Tournament lineage, uh, with the way that that weapon, the shock rifle, would work, and this weapon is jokingly called, you know, it's nicknamed the shock croc, because it kind of looks like a crocodile from the side, yeah. um, is that uh, the Unreal Tournament shock rifle, but imagine, like, version 5.0 of that in some very unique ways you can manipulate the primary and the alternate fires that kind of take the original formula of shooting your alt fire and twist it on its head. Um, you know, I always said there'd be a little bit of that UT DNA in this game, and uh, this is uh, truly a, a fun one to knock people around with, with uh, the various fires as far as impacting momentum on them. Yeah. So, I mean, this is like the 
you know, this is our high poly. Obviously, you no, know, no textures like, on this one, right? No textures on this one. I think the next one, Chris, if you will, uh, is still yeah. a concept. But that, is, that is freaking out. Yeah, yeah it's That's still awesome, a concept, man. but this is what it will look like when it's all said and done. Carbon uh, fiber. Yeah, I think, I mean, you, you mentioned it before. We've got different manufacturers in the game, and each one of those manufacturers has a certain look. So, we'll, you know, when you see uh, this weapon, you'll know it's made by the Belize Corporation. And yeah. we've got like eight or nine different corporations that make different weapons for the, for the game. So, it'd be pretty cool to kind of see this one next to the next weapon that we have and kind of compare the, the look and feel of it. Uh, as you go through the game. So well, it's something that, that Borderlands started really doing well back in the day where it's like, you know, oh, hey, this ma this is manufactured by this company. I can yeah. kind of identify that, you know, to the point where I look at the mood boards and the direction that Tramel has, and he's having, like, the type of bolt that this manufacturer <laughs> Belize uses, is this whatever hexagonal or something type thing, and that's what makes that consistent. And it's that level of detail in your world building that I think fans really latch on to. Um, you know, when Jayhawk was originally concepting this, you know, mm -hmm. I asked him one question. It was like, you know, what if you made an energy weapon that looked like an Italian sports car and inspired it? And, um, you know, I'm obviously a fan of Italian sports cars, and, you know, I could have carbon fiber in my toilet seat, I would, because it just looks so <laughs> darn good. You know you can make that. I probably yeah. should, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, one extravagance at a time. i got to get a tiger first. <laughs> so where did, the, so where did the, the idea for this come from? Did it come from a specific place, or...? Uh, I mean, it's basically the idea that when you look at the state of your average modern shooter, it's mm -hmm. a shotgun, rocket launcher, and assault rifle. And we'll, we'll, have, we'll have those, right? We have some unique twists yeah. on that, bullet-based weapons. But, you know, when was the last time you had to use an energy weapon to lead your enemy? When was the last time you saw a uh, primary and alternate fire in a game that can be used in a unique manner? Uh, and then also, you know, taking kind of from the fiction, you know, it was like, you know, in America, HK was a family company. And you have, you know, uh, people like Glock and, and those kinds of entities. You know, what if we had created, you know, international versions of that where, you know, the Italians might not have been that big on ballistic-based weapons, but the idea of energy is something that, that find, they find really compelling. And uh, then just, you know, kind of took it and ran with it. And um, it, the, the particle effects are coming online for this with some tasty kind of, uh, you know, bluish, uh, purplish uh, electricity arcs and things like that. And uh, when you hold it, you feel like you're uh, going for this kind of way of crisping people. Um, I saw somebody in the chat channel was saying, uh, you know, it looks a little bit like District 9, and I, absolutely there's a little bit of that District 9 DNA yeah. on this. Um, I rewatched that movie a few months ago, and those sci-fi weapons still, in my opinion, are some of the best ever put together in sci-fi. I'd that's, say, I'd say Elysium had them beat. Yeah, I but, like the real gun. The, the real gun just, but just the, does the, it for the me, whole man. overall film. Just Matt Damon. Yeah, just yeah. I think you just hate on Matt Damon. It's just Interstellar, really. Spoiler. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> just, just just forget his part in Interstellar because it was it ruined it for me. But in in Elysium, that that lad, that gun that he he shot through the wall and just like tore the dude up. Yeah. Like that, that's just amazing. I love that that weapon. And so the look of it. Yeah, I mean, the idea of something that's, you know, fantastic but tangible, right? It, yep. You know, it doesn't look like a lawnmower, but it looks like a, an energy weapon. And uh, I think it, you know, Jayhawk nailed it. Yeah, yeah, he definitely did. And a lot of stuff that we're doing, like you said, we're, we're trying to make sure that this stuff is grounded in some kind of reality. And with having these manufacturers actually have a history, like coming in, coming into the, uh, onto the team and having that, that history there was extremely helpful. Because then I could just fill in the blanks of what happens along the way. You know, so the type of where they where they came from, like the Italian uh, sports car and it being an Italian company, you can also incorporate uh, the Italian flag colors into it and get that that kind of feel to it. Um, the type of angles on, on like a Lamborghini or something like that or uh, a Ducati or anything like that. We can incorporate that stuff into some of the weapons that we're getting. And then you know, actually, when you look at the weapons, you can feel like that has come from that region of uh, development. We so. should totally get Nexon to make fake ads for the net, one of the big soccer tournaments to like in, in Italy. <laughs> it's, just, it's like viral marketing, right? But yeah, I mean, we could do like yeah. actual fake, you know, 30 second commercials for any of these yeah. manufacturers in their history. And, uh, you know, it's part of, you know, making a new world. That's what, you know, gets me out of bed in the morning. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this weapon looks like it, it, it is grounded in fiction, right? It looks like something that has, um, you know, it has a lot of planning that went into it. Um, you know, on the on the chat, guys, uh, do you guys have any questions uh, for Tremel or Cliff in regards to the weapon? Yeah, well, that, well, that's lagging out. A quick story is, you know, in my house, I have video game weapons mounted on the wall outside the video game room, and uh, there's one slot that's empty. And every time I walked <laughs> by that, people were like, "What's that for?" And as I considered coming back to make games again, I was like, 
that's for what's next. Whatever weapon becomes one of the iconic ones for this game, we're going to get a replica made and have that on the damn wall. Nice. Book and prawns. Yeah, that's great. That was, uh... Um, so Matrix uh, 9900 asks, is there an alt fire mode for this weapon? Yeah, it has a primary and an alternate fire. Uh, it's energy based, and uh, as I alluded to earlier, you can kind of combine the two in unique manners uh, in the game. And, uh, you know, we're still prototyping that. We're not quite ready to show that. But, uh, you know, start thinking about what you can do with a combination of projectile weapons and trace weapons that are energy, uh, that fire at your enemies. Um, Another question is, uh, is there any other country inspiration? So you guys mentioned... Yeah, we've got, we've got developers all over the, over the place. We've got uh, one from China. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a United States one as well. We've got the, the Italian one. We've got one from... Um, one that actually has no real origin. It's basically... It's, it's, it's a conglomerate of parts that come together to make weapons. Which is really cool. I thought that one was a really interesting take on what's going on in the world today. And uh, I think, you know, we can keep that under wraps right now. Yeah, some of the writing was actually done by Josh Ortega, who worked yeah. on uh, Gears 2. And he, has, he did the uh, comic book called The Other Dead, which is about the zombie apocalypse, but the animals are all zombies. Which That's... is the last original take on the zombie apocalypse, I think, ever done. So, Snowboard Game uh, wants to know... Yes, this is the bullshit laser bullshit from their recordings. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Snowboard Game wants to know, when designing weapons, do you start with a lot of reference, or do you just start sketching silhouettes and just go from there? It sounds uh, like here... It starts with... Basically, it starts with the description. Okay. So, yeah. all the information that uh, Cliff and his group came up with prior to me getting here um, just kind of informs me where to go. And then, w with that description, for Belize... We basically realized that it was an Italian uh, luxury, kind of luxury gun maker, you know, and it uses all the finest uh, materials like carbon fiber and titanium and, you know, suede and leather and all these other things to, com to complete these weapons. Uh, and then we start gathering material based on those. So, uh, you know, reference for Lamborghinis, different shape language, uh, Ducati bikes, uh, Kawasaki bikes actually have uh, the same kind of uh, Z pattern in them that uh, the Ducati does. So we kind of gather up all this reference, bolt screws, same thing, try to find different bolt patterns that kind of fit the look and feel of the Italian car maker. Uh, something that's unique, something that's that's not necessarily ordinary, like a Phillips head or a flat head screw or something like that. And then we just kind of put all of these pieces together in the mood board, and then uh, we give that to, to, to Jay Hawkins, and he goes to town on this thing. Yeah, Jay, Jay's incredible. That guy is, is insane. And he, he's very shy, so you might not see him on the stream very much. He, oh, uh, he's getting on here. He's yeah. coming <laughs> up here. He, he's this prime. dude, he looks like, like he was prom king in high school. He's yeah. got broad shoulders, and then you're like, Pop, what's up? And he's like, oh, jeez. Yeah, he's, he's pretty yoked, man. Jay's pretty yoked. I wouldn't mess with him in the dark alley. Yeah, he's a big boy. Um, so there's a, there's a few more... Um, Questions. Zanbot uh, two thirty eight wants to know how we're going to balance guns, which I think is an, an interesting question that we can we can definitely answer. Yeah. Um, play test. Play test. Play test. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said earlier in the stream, when you're talking about Ubisoft and bugs that may have shipped in the game or Halo's matchmaking issues, you can think you know your game is balanced. Uh, you may we play it with the twenty people in here that's going to be ramping up, but you don't know. Like, we may release it into the wild, and they, they may find a combination of a movement mode and a weapon and some sort of way to exploit the level that makes something completely OP. Um, mm -hmm. But that said, OP is not necessarily a bad thing. Back in the day, Quake 1, showing my age here, the rocket launcher was basically the weapon you wanted. And then if you got the quad, fuck everybody else, you were going to kill them all, right? And it kind of, you know, centered around that power struggle. So you want kind of a, a range of weapons, because I can confirm right now, we're going to actually have pickups in the maps which outside of Halo having it seems pretty rare for a lot of shooters these days, you know, uh, have, um, counter, uh, what you, no, uh, I'm spacing on it, Team Fortress 2 has, uh, you know, some health and, and, and ammo, but outside of that, there's not, not really the draw of a power weapon. And uh, so we'll still have weapons that you start with, we'll have some power weapons, and um, we'll do our best to balance it, but, you know, I want to have a very early version of this game in the player's hands so they can tell us, you know, and, we, you know, this is the whole thing, you know, does, does the game need crafting or something like that? I don't know, you know, how soon can we get a version into your greedy hands as gamers to, you know, molest and beat up and play with and just figure out what works and doesn't work, you know? Yeah, it's usually the best way to test. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yes, molest it until it's tested. That's what I always say. <laughs> that's, our, that's our slogan right there. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. Bosky uh, Productions. <laughs> um, let's see if there's anything else here. Um, um, friendly Fire, yeah. Um, yeah. Friendly Fire is going to be default by off. Um, there might be ways you can impact momentum on your teammates, you know, uh, where, you, you know, an explosion goes off, you know, sends them flying up rocket jump style. Um, but by and large in the wild, yeah, putting friendly fire off is usually a good idea. But, you know, some players love it. It makes the game slightly more tactical. You know, Counter-Strike with friendly fire is a very intense experience. So we'll have the option. Uh, Chris, can you go back to uh, scene five real quick? Tremel, somebody's asking, uh, Neowave607 is asking where, where the trigger is at. Uh, well, I can't really, I don't have a laser pointer. It's like, yeah. right, you see where the little red thing is, a little red uh, zigzag in the back? It's right in front of that, the little chrome piece. Nice. So it's right up in there, all up. Chrome between. triggers confirmed. Yes, yeah, all up in betwixt in there. I'm thinking of chrono trigger. <laughs> it's actually titanium. Okay. They don't F with chrome on Belize. Oh, that's, sorry. That's low budge. Dude. Sorry. Low budge. Low with, budge. Don't go off canon. Yeah, they can't. You can't, man. They, they stick with the finest materials. They'll call you out on it. Uh, Toxton wants to know, uh, will there be a recharge time for this weapon? Uh, right now, it's looking like it's going to be ammo-based. Uh, some sort of like battery pack-looking thing. Um, so, you know, kind of like if your battery wears out, you know, you put another one in. Uh, we're considering, you know, the model of the overall gun has... For different guns, the overall gun has a certain amount of ammo. Once mm-hmm. you've depleted the built-in battery, then you throw the gun away. Uh, but we're not there yet. Right now, we're you know, uh, kind of ballistic and energy ammo. We're kind of running around the maps picking it up. And ammo is an interesting thing, actually, because uh, you know, too much of it, and there's no point to picking it up, and there's no there's no strategy to shooting. You want to conserve your bullets. Uh, too little, and you're frustrated because you're trying to run around melee people all day long. So that's a yet another delicate balance that needs to be found with regular regular play tests. Uh, Caddy's uh, eighty three says one hundred twenty eight player count. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I've, I've done that already. <laughs> I'm, I'm so done with that right now. Been there, done that. Wrapped oh the car, God, dude. I'm so done with that right now. Yeah, we're five on five. Yeah, I mean that's how it is right now, and it's intimate. So that you know, I can kill Rohan over and over and yeah. over, and really frustrate the shit out of him. Honestly, and it is frustrating because it happens a lot. Yep. All right. Well, cool, guys. I think uh, I think that's it. You guys have anything else you want to say? Any other questions from the the chat? Yeah, last couple no. minutes. This uh, is it. This flew by. I'd say uh, uh, subscribe to our Twitch channel, please do. And uh, this is going up on YouTube as well. It right? is. So and also subscribe. Oh, oh, look at that! <laughs> Who's that? Guy? Toasty. Look at that. <laughs> subscribe oh. to our uh, <laughs> YouTube channel as well as well as follow me on Twitter at. P-S underscore T-R-A-Y. Cool. Yeah, so if you go... Yep, there it is again. I just I just love that. I could watch that all day long. I know. Uh, so, guys, thanks, uh, thanks everyone, for joining us. Um, as Trebel said, you know, we're, we're trying to build a community here. Um, you know, we have a bunch of different platforms and, and places that we're, we're trying to get your feedback from. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to launch a subreddit after this, this goes up. So head over to the subreddit. Um, if you go back to 12... Um, the subreddit address is uh, on the page um, and then also go over to bosskey.com and drop your email in there to get uh, newsletter updates our newsletter subscribers get the first updates before anyone else so just to give you a heads up you might want to do that so uh, guys thanks 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 for tuning in guys uh, yeah. see you next time absolutely